Uh, I would perform in track and field. I would want to be a part of the four by one team. Uh, I did that in high school. And we were pretty good. Uh, I don't know if I would medal. You know, those guys are pretty fast. Uh, I got some speed myself, but like not nowhere on their level. Uh, it definitely helped me improve my confidence knowing that I belong here. But uh, I know that they, deep down that I have a lot more to prove and that I'm way better than what you guys seen last year. Do you think there's going to be a target on your back since you put up a thousand yards? For sure, yeah, but that's, that. I mean, that's what I wanted, you know? Can't complain about having too much food on my plate, you know? The goal is to eat. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know. What would you say is some of your strengths as a rusher? Uh, strengths as a rusher? Uh, consistency, I'm going to be consistent. Uh, durability, you know, uh, I'm very durable. And then uh, I have great strength. Um, I'm going to show you guys my speed this year. And then uh, just my ability to pass, block, and catch out of the backfield, which I hope I get to show a lot more this year as well. Any areas of your game that you want to improve on? Uh, speed. Like, you know, uh, guys thought I was slow last year, which, I mean, I feel like I, I wasn't. But, like, you know, got to finish my runs, and I feel like I'm going to have the opportunity to show that this year that I can finish runs. What's the situation? It's four quarter, two minutes left. You guys are driving the red zone. Do you want the ball in your hands? Yeah, of course. I want the ball in my hands. I feel like that I can make something happen. Do you feel you get stronger on every year? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's been like that my whole life. In the fourth quarter, I'm as strong as ever. Corey, you've had a lot of success in your football career, basically going back to Pee Wee. Last year, three and nine. What did that teach you about the game of football? And, you know, what are you going to take into this season after that? Uh, it, it taught me that, you know, I always felt like I was a good leader. But, like, it taught me that I, leading is just not by leading by example. Some guys need to need somebody to speak life into them every day, speak positivity into them, or give them a hard time sometimes. They need that vocal leader that – they need that presence in a different way in their life. And, uh, so I just learned how to be more of a vocal leader and lead in more ways than one. Yeah. Corey, you've played in the SEC, now the Big 12. Do you see any similarities or differences between the two conferences? Yeah, so, uh, you know, in the SEC, they, they get the rep for being the best conference. But in the Big 12, guys are big, strong, and some of the best in the nation as well. So it's like, it's football. Football, wherever you play, wherever you go in the Big 12, it's football. It's going to be some of the best football that you are going to encounter ever. Corey, looking at the togetherness of this team based on everything you guys went through this all season, how exciting is it in year two of the Big 12 now that you've kind of experienced some ups and downs and know what to expect? It's very exciting. Um, having the guys that we had last year return and then adding a whole bunch of new guys to the roster, it's very exciting because we built a uh, competitive edge throughout the program, complete program alignment, and just made it made our goals known throughout the program uh, that, so the new guys are accustomed to it and ready to perform at Nipper. As a follow-up, what do you guys like Chance Williams and Evan Pryor bring to that running back room to kind of give you a breather when you need it? So they bring electricity yeah, to the running back room. You know, uh, like they're, they're so fast and like quick and quick twitch and stuff like that and they do everything you know, and just fast and I feel like that's, that's what the running back room needed. We talked to you earlier. Uh, you said this is the first time you wore an outfit like that. Just walk us through the media day fit. Uh, so. Like, uh, when they told me I was going to media day, I'm like, man, this is like a once in a lifetime event. So I'm like debating on if I want to go buy some designer clothes. So I'm, I'm going to the mall. I'm in there. I'm talking to the workers in Louis Vuitton. I'm like, you know, I never bought any designer before. So I'm like, so this is going to be a, fir a first for me. So what do I do? I'm asking people in the mall, asking my friends, asking teammates, asking my sister, like, would I look good in this? You know, like, I'm more of a Nike sweatsuit type guy, but then I put on this suit and I've been getting a lot of compliments. So uh, I did something right. Can you, can you show us the shoes? Uh, <laughs> give us some. There you go. <laughs> There are three guys uh, that transferred away from Cincinnati and are on UCF uh, roster now. Does the fact that your former teammates are now on a, uh, on a uh, team you're going to face, does that affect you in any way or motivate you? Um. I'm, I'm always motivated, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for those guys because they felt that they needed to go somewhere else. So I'm happy that they found a place that they fit in and that they're gonna they're gonna, gonna do great at. So I'm just happy for those guys and I can't wait to compete against them. Though. Those are my friends, regardless of what uniform they have. On the flip side of that, you faced Jared Bartlett last year. Now he's suit up in the same uniform. 
for Nigeria. Um, what does he bring to the team and what have you seen from him? Just a like competitive edge that like he, he's like such a competitor. Like I lift with him I lift with him like every week, like multiple times a week and he's probably one of the strongest, fastest people you are you will encounter. And like he's probably one of the dudes I'm closest to off the field. You know, I hang out with him a lot. Uh, he's just a great person. You know? Corey, you played with Dante for a long time. How hard was it to hear the news about the blood clots? And what was your reaction when you heard that he was going to be out for a while? It was such a uh, unique situation. It was hard um, at first because, you know, when I first heard it, I'm like, man, I, I, football aside, like I, thinking about him as a friend, as a friend and as a, as a person, you know, uh, how is this going to affect his life outside of football? You know, because I, I, I love that man. Like, he's, he's my dog. That's my dog. We're pretty, we're pretty close. So I just wanted to see him be healthy football side. A lot of the guys, probably they're going to have a Corey, what's been the biggest now, focus for you this offseason? Obviously, Coach Nico's done a great job for this offseason in the uh, weight room and conditioning. What's been the biggest focus yeah, for you this offseason? So what I've been focused on, uh, speed, you know, speed, long distance speed, uh, finishing runs. Um, I always had good hands and been able to pass block, but I want to make sure that's an emphasis that uh, these pro scouts and all these people see that I can do more than just run the football. I can catch, I can pass block, I play special teams, all that. That's been, that's been my focus the whole offseason. From your perspective, having all five offensive linemen back, how much of that is a help hanging in your it's, it's, it's such a great help because I know those guys' skills. I know where they're weak at. I know all of it. And they know my running style. So they know that shoot, he might cut back right here or it's third and two. So he's running straight ahead. He's going to lower his shoulder. So we got to we gotta bow up and get, yeah. him, get him in the first down. Coach Dawkins comes from Memphis this, uh, later on this spring. Walk us through what this summer has been like here. Relationship with him so, far. so it's been a it's been a great relationship uh, start with great. Coach Dawkins because um I, I was a veteran in the room so I, so when it comes to knowing the playbook and stuff like that I know it like the back of my hand so he comes in new new assistant running back coach as well and they come in they ask me questions and stuff like that uh, and let me lead the running back room and stuff like that and he's coaching but like he he makes me feel like a coach as well because he allows me to take the freshman's hand and talk to them, study with them and things like that. One more for Corey. Kind of going off Neil's question about developing speed, what specific workouts are you doing in the weight room or on the field to just get that extra tick of speed, that breakaway speed? So it's just, it's, it's strength. Like you got to strengthen those yeah. small muscles, those quick, quick twitch muscles and things like that. It's not just... People think it's just like you gotta sprint, run, yeah. sprint fast, run fast. But it's it's so much more than that. And I feel like uh, we've been doing we've been doing yoga and all that kind of stuff, uh, just flexibility and all that kind of stuff. And I feel like uh, we've been doing a great job of that. Like a lot, not not just me, but like a lot of guys on our team have gotten a lot faster. Thanks, right, Corey. Thanks, Corey.